Welcome everybody. So what I'd like to do is show you how to add and subtract polynomials. So basically polynomials can take the shape of monomials. Here in the case we have monomials. We could have binomials, trinomials, and then obviously we could have any polynomial from one term up to um, infinite many terms. So just to re uh, remember when we're looking at adding terms, basically what we're doing is we're adding like terms. And for them to be like terms, um, basically what they have to have is the base of our power or of our term has to be the same. So if we're dealing with x's, we, and I actually I dealt with x's all throughout in here, um, then just to kind of keep things simple, but they all have to be x's. If I was using different variables, we could only add x's with x's, y's with y's, a's with a's, b's with b's. But in this case, we're all using x's to kind of keep things simple because I want you to focus not so much on the x, a's, um, the variable, but on the power, which is going to be what the variable is being raised up to. So not only does the base have to be exactly the same, the power has to be exactly the same. So I can only combine, or like terms are only when the base is exactly the same, which in this case, all the bases are always the same. But the power has to be the same, and that's what I want to focus on this video, where as you can see, I have a lot of different powers, four, two, uh, one, three, five, and so forth. So we got to make sure when we're combining like terms um, that the base and the power are exactly the same. And when we combine like terms, you know, what we're basically going to be doing is combining the coefficient and then leaving uh, the exponent as it is. So for instance, you know, if I always, you know, look at this as like one apple plus one apple is equal to two apples, right? We keep the apple as kind of like the base that's the same. Well, in the same respect, if I have, you know, two x plus two x, we're going to keep the base, the apple x, the same, and we're just going to combine our coefficients, which in this case would be four x. So it's kind of similar and something you can kind of relate to. So in this case, we got to make sure the bases are the same, which again, I'm not going to say this again because all the bases are the same. All the bases of our exponents are x. But we got to make sure our powers are the same, and our powers in this case are both 1. So therefore, we can combine them. And by combining them, basically what we're going to do is just combine the coefficients. So in this case, we're adding these two. And then we're going to keep the bases as well as the same. So it's going to be 3 plus 4. Um, times x, which is going to be 7x. So therefore, 3x plus 4x equals 7x. Um, in this case, now again, you can see I use a lot of parentheses, and you can see there's a lot of problems up here. Um, I wanted to make parentheses just to kind of make sure I could contain each example kind of in with itself. Um, but a lot of times when you're doing multiple, when you're doing addition, um, we it's okay. We can apply the commutative property. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. So really, parentheses are not that important. But in subtraction. It's very, very important because the community property does not apply, meaning uh, t you know, 3 minus 2 is different than 2 minus 3. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this. So what I can do is kind of get rid of the parentheses. 2x squared minus x plus 3x squared minus 5x. And now what I can do is just rearrange them so they have like terms. So I can bring the x squareds together and then just the x's all together. So therefore, I have 2x squared plus 3x squared is going to leave me with 5x squared. And then negative x minus, or negative x minus 5x is like negative 1 minus 5. You owe me a dollar. You borrow five more dollars. Now you owe me 6x. All right? Um, however, when dealing with subtraction, it's very, very important to make sure what we do is we uh, distribute. Now, so there's a couple different ways to do this. And I'm going to use the vertical method on my next couple examples here. And uh, I'll use the vertical method here in our next couple of examples. But um, in this case, what we're doing is not going to use the vertical. We're going to basically get rid of the parentheses. So when we have subtraction, we're going to think of that we're going to use kind of like the distributive property. I'm going to distribute this negative to basically each one of these properties. So therefore, I'm going to have 2x squared plus 4x plus 5. And therefore, now it's going to be a minus x squared minus uh, I'm sorry, a minus times a minus is now a plus, because that was a positive x squared, so therefore it's a min minus times a positive is minus. Minus times a minus is going to be positive, so that's going to be positive 8x. And then that's going to be a minus, uh, ne minus uh, negative 9 is going to be a minus 9. Okay? And then again, I can just kind of group them. Um, you could rearrange them, re I rewrite them like I did over here. Or then obviously what you kind of get to notice is, well, I'm really just combining my 2x two, my two squared and my negative x squared, my 4x and my 8x, and my 5 and my negative 9. So 2x squared minus x squared is just going to be x squared. 4x plus 8x is going to be a positive 12x. 
And then positive 5 minus 9 is going to be a negative 4. OK? Um, in the next example, I think it's really important what we're going to do is kind of use our vertical method. And the vertical method is just the kind of same thing. Instead of saying 5 plus 3, we also learn that's the same thing as 5 plus 3. So basically what we're doing is we're just writing addition in a vertical format. And this is, might have been something you guys have remember um, previous to doing 5 plus 3 horizontally. So what I'll do is I'll just take the first term and I'll rewrite it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. Now, I notice there I don't want to rewrite this as negative 8x squared minus x plus 3x um, cubed. Because then I can't add these vertically because these are not like terms. So what I need to make sure I do is rearrange this. Sorry, that's my bell. And actually, I could rearrange that before I even do the vertical method. I could do 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x. I could rearrange this with 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus x. Now you can see that they're both in descending order, so it's a little bit easier now when I vertically combine them because you have to make sure you align your like terms plus 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus x. So then, now you're just vertically adding 2 plus 3. And make sure you also always go back to this. 2 plus 3 is 5x cubed. Notice how, my, notice how my like terms are now vertically aligned, which is helpful. Negative 5x squared plus a negative 8x squared is a negative 13x squared. And 3x plus, um, 3x plus a negative x is going to be a positive 2x. And there you go. Um, now I'm going to do subtraction uh, with, hmm, I guess I didn't really like that one. Um, OK, well now I'll just do subtraction using the vertical method, I guess. So again, to use a vertical method, again, what we're going to do is we're just going to write out the first term. So I have 7x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 2x. Now, here comes a little bit of a problem. We're going to minus, write a minus, and then we're going to write inside the parentheses, 5x to the fourth, and then plus 3x cubed plus 2x squared. Now, this comes an issue here. Actually, you know, let's do, I'm going to do this one first, vertically, and then I'll show you what to do here. So let's go ahead and do this one, the vertical method. x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus 2x to the fourth minus 5x squared. Now, when I'm doing subtraction, I prefer to distribute and then kind of group my and then group them. The, this, the vertical method, I, I believe, makes a lot of mistakes with students. So we just got to make sure that we kind of say this out loud as we do it. x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth. Therefore, there's technically a 1 right there. That's going to be negative x to the fourth. And then we have a negative 3x squared minus a negative 5x. And a lot of students are just going to subtract, are just going to say negative 3 minus 5, negative 8. No, you got to be careful. It's negative 3 minus a negative 5. Therefore, that's double negative, which is subtracting a negative is the same thing as adding um, a positive. So therefore, that's really addition. So it's negative 3x plus 5x, which is going to be a positive 2x squared. OK. Now, kind of going back to this problem, the reason why this problem gets a little tricky is because I have a cubed in the denominator, but I don't have any cubes over here up in the numerator. I have an x in the numerator, but nothing here in the denominator. So to kind of do this vertically, um, now, grouping this would actually make kind of sense because you can only group numbers that are with each other. So that's why I kind of like using this distributive method because if you use the distributive method, you can only group the, the terms that are exactly the same, have the exact same base as well as the same power. So it's not going to allow you to kind of group anything that's not together. So my final answer is 2x to the fourth um, plus 3x cubed let's see, minus 3x squared plus 2x. So I like grouping because there's only two terms I could technically group and to be able to kind of do this. However, if you like the vertical method or if you're caught up in a problem doing vertical method, I want to make sure you understand at least using some place values. Because I can still write this out. All polynomials have, you know, start with your highest power, which we call their degree, and then they go down in descending order. And if you're missing a value, if you're missing a power, we can always use a place value for that using 0 as the coefficient. So I can write this as 7x to the fourth. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. I'm coming in. I'm just making a video. Oh, no worries. It's OK. Um, I'll just go and finish up with this.
or almost then. Um, so therefore, I can use this place value as a positive 0x2 cubed minus 5x squared plus 2x. And then I will subtract. And you can see here, I'm not, I don't have my squared, so I'll use 0x squared as my place value. So I have 5x to the fourth. I have my cubed, which will be plus 3x cubed. And let's see, plus 2x squared. And or that was my subtraction. I have a 0. I needed an x. Sorry, that's a 0x. And then plus 0x. Therefore, going ahead and using my vertical, um, vertical alignment, you can see that that's obviously going to give you your 2x to the fourth. 0 minus 3 is going to give you your negative 3x cubed. Negative 5 minus 2 um, is going to give you negative 5x squared. Negative 5x squared. That's a positive 2x. Oh, that's minus 2x. Did I do that correct up there? That's negative 2x. That's minus 2. Oh, I forgot to distribute that. Sorry about that. That is going to be negative 5x squared. That's negative 7x squared. There you go. Even checking my mistakes. Um, and then make sure I distributed. That becomes negative. Oops, that was supposed to be a positive. So that's a negative 3x squared. I forgot to distribute this. Remember when you're going, you're distributing the negative 5x? That should be a non-negative, and that should be a negative. So that's a negative. OK, and that's positive 2x. All right, very good. So therefore, that gives me my 2x to the fourth. Um, this is minus, so that's a negative 3x cubed. This becomes a negative 7x squared. And therefore, then I don't have anything, or that's a 2x. 2x minus 0x is just going to be a positive 2x. OK? All right, last but not least, let's go ahead and get through this problem. Um, again, you can see this is addition. So I think the easiest thing to do with it, addition, is just going to use the vertical method. And again, I'm going to do another example of the place values. So you see that this is in ascending order, and this one is in, the, in descending order. So I'm just going to write my exponents in descending order and then include my place values. So I have negative, x, uh, negative 5x to the fifth, negative 5x to the fourth. I don't have a cube, so I'm just going to use positive. 0x cubed, and then I have plus 3x squared, then I have a plus 3x, and, and you can see here I have a constant, so I'll just use plus 0 as my place value. Then I'm just going to add. In my denominator, I'm just going to align them, and if I don't have an alignment, I'm just going to use another place value. So I have a negative 3x to the fifth. I don't have a four, uh, I do have a 2 to the fourth, plus 5x to the fourth. I don't have another cubed, so that works. Plus 3x squared, which this one I have a negative 2x squared. And then I do not have a 3, I do not have anything raised to the x, so I'm going to be plus a 0x. And then I have plus 2. So now you can see I can just vertically um, add these up. This is going to give me negative 8x to the fifth. This gives me plus 0x to the fourth. 0 times anything is just going to be 0. This is going to give me 0x cubed, which again is just going to take me on to 0. Here I'll have um, plus x squared. 3 plus negative 2 is just 1, so we'll write that as x squared. Plus 3x plus 2. Therefore, simplify negative 8x to the fifth plus x squared plus 3x plus 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you add and subtract polynomials. Thanks.